Welcome to the teaching ministry of David T. Demola. Open your heart to receive as Pastor Demola teaches the uncompromised Word of God. All right. Ready to get into this Word tonight? We begin in 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. I want to stress the importance tonight of applying the Word of God into your life. In the testimony that Alexandra shared, a little thing that she wrote to me this week, she, she said it was by keeping that word and confessing that word over and over again since the period of time she got born again, Amen. speaking the word of God. The unfortunate thing is you can't speak the word if you don't know the word. Right. And so... The principal thing we need to understand is knowing our rights and privileges in Christ. I make the analogy often of having an insurance policy but never knowing what's in the insurance policy. And this is the life assurance policy. When you know what God said about you, then you can stand on the promises. And so in 2 Peter chapter 1, this is what we are told in verse 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us. And every time you see that word us, it refers to those of us that are in the family of God. It's not just the general world population. It's the family of God, us. Us is different than them. Uh -huh. So watch this now. His divine power hath given unto us. Notice the next word. I want you to say it out loud. All. all things. Not some things. Not almost all things. All things that pertain unto what? Life. Life and godliness. So there is a distinction there between your life on this planet and godliness, meaning your spiritual life and your natural life. God has given us all things that pertain to every facet of your life. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now that's going to become very important in a little while. So here is how he has given us these things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue. And the word knowledge there is an interesting word. The word knowledge there means a precise, exact knowledge of exactly what we're talking about, not a general knowledge. You know, we can all know a lot about a lot of things, but know a little about certain specific things. They say it in the world this way. A jack of all trades and a master of none. Right? The important thing is to understand who God is and what he's done for us. You can never stand on promises that you don't know. And so the knowledge of the word of God, the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue, is hereby given to us in verse 4. By the exceeding great and precious promises... Promises, promises, over 3,000 of them in this word. Promises, over 3,000 promises in this word. By these exceeding great and precious promises, that by these promises, we may become partakers. 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 Why, why do you express that, Pastor? Because it's one thing to know something about something. It's another thing to experience it. Come on, I need a little help now. All right, so watch this now. We become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through, through what? Through lust. So God has put us apart from the world and the world system by giving us these exceeding great and precious promises, and by these promises, we become a partaker of a divine nature. 
Now, just to skip ahead of myself here, if you can partake of that divine nature in your physical well-being, that means that you will die at a long, long old age without any sickness and disease in your body. Well, that sounds too good to be true, Pastor. Yeah, well, that's the problem with us. We have succumbed to the world system by thinking that we have to be controlled by powers that have already been defeated at a place called Calvary. Ah, uh, come on now. Glory to God. When Jesus left that cloak that was on him in the borrowed tomb of Joseph of Arimathea and rose from the dead, he conquered every damnable thing that stood against us in our life. Yes, praise God. And gave us these exceeding great and precious promises that we could partake of that divine nature that he lived in while he was on this planet. Jesus did not die of any disease. He died with what we placed upon him. I want you to get this. When Adam and Eve sinned, the Bible says, watch this now, I want you to hear it. You shall surely die, God said. But they had already died spiritually. it, It is notable that the human body was created to live forever. And I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I want to tell you this. On that resurrection day when all the saints of God shall arise out of every cemetery, out of shipwrecks, out of plane crashes, out of all the tragedies that have happened in the world, when they are resurrected from the dead, they will put on a glorious heavenly body. Yeah. Yeah, somebody ought to say amen. Glory to God. That means eternal existence with God. And literally, if you'll think about it correctly, we go back into the original creation that God made. That the body was not created to die. It only died because of the sin of Adam. And I came to tell you that the sin of Adam was already purged in the blood of Calvary. Man, I could get real excited about this. I kind of got to keep my pace here and, and go on. That means that salvation is more than just having your spirit alive unto God. Your body has now become the temple of the Holy Spirit. He has come to dwell in your human body. If you'll think back to the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit dwelt in a place called the Holy of Holies. That's where the glory of God was and the presence of God was. And anybody that was restricted from going in there, that went in there uh, uh, unauthorized, was stricken dead. Think about it now, that the Holy Spirit has come to live in your human body. I don't think you heard what I'm saying. He has come to live in your human body. You are the dwelling place of the Holy Ghost on this earth. And the Holy Ghost, yeah, this is going to be powerful. I hope you get it. The Holy Ghost will never be able to dwell in an unholy place. You are not unholy. You are the righteousness of God and sanctified and made holy. Otherwise, the Holy Ghost could not dwell in you. Now, that's crazy. That's some crazy stuff. Because right there, people will start thinking, well, I don't understand that because I know all the imperfections that I have. God doesn't look at your imperfections. He looks at the justification and the sanctification that he has placed in you through the indwelling person and presence of the Holy Ghost. That is the miracle of salvation. It's not just signing a name on a card and repeating a 40-word prayer. It is now God living in you. You are the dwelling place of the Holy Ghost on this planet. Give him some praise right now. Woo! Now watch this. 
So if you are the temple of the Holy Ghost, how would your heavenly Father like your temple to look like? I'm not talking about weight. I'm not talking about nose jobs and a tuck here and a tuck there. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your physical well-being. Because everybody that's in this room tonight knows this, that when you are physically ailing, you don't have the right state of mind. Don't fool anybody. You know I'm telling you the truth. When you have a cold, you don't want anybody being, even being near you. When you have a temperature, if you ever get one, you want to lay in bed. You don't want to talk to anybody when you have a headache. I'll try over here. I think I might get better results. When you have a stomach ache, you don't want anybody near you. Imagine when somebody has a dread disease. When they're laying in a hospital bed, they don't want anybody around them, anybody near them. When you're ailing, you don't want them. You're not, you're not the same person when you're ailing as you are when you are healthy. Glory to God. When you're healthy and strong, you're smiling, you're happy, you're joyful. You couldn't care less if you don't have a dime in the bank. Come on, talk to me a little bit. Because there's a lot of people that have millions in the bank, but they are, they are unhealthy. They're always sick. Money cannot buy you health. Money can buy you a brand new car, but if you're sick, you can't drive it. And so if we believe our covenant rights of healing, then we understand that if your body's the temple of the Holy Spirit, notice it didn't say your spirit is the temple of the Holy Spirit, it says your body is. That means he wants your body to be whole, healthy, strong, vivacious, youthful, strengthened. Uh, I'm preaching better than your amen in right now. He wants you to be happy, peaceful, joyful. He wants the joy of the Lord to be your strength. And I came to tell you tonight that God has a plan for your life. In these exceeding great and precious promises, he made a promise about your divine health. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul. Oh, now we get a hint about something. Your soul prospering is what you know by the Spirit of God where that knowledge of your covenant rights are. When your soul, which is your thinking, your emotions, your intellect, your will, when your soul is prospering because it's got this word on the inside of you, it literally reflects itself on every other part of your being. Happy people on the inside are the best people to be around. <laughs> you might as well say amen, come on. When the joy of the Lord is on the inside of you, it's catching. You don't want to be around a grouch. At least I don't. You want to be around people that are joyful, happy. Come on, that celebrate life. <laughs> Ah, oh, hallelujah. Let's celebrate the goodness of God. Come on. They can get, get, people like that can get excited about a mushroom pizza. Come on. They can get excited about rice and beans. You know what I'm talking about. Come on. Oh, my God. When that joy gets on the inside of you because you know who you are in Christ, everything about you changes. Your countenance changes. Your attitude changes. Your personality reflects it. Everything around you reflects it. That's why God wants you to live in divine health. He wants you to be peaceful about everything that he promised you in his word. With long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. Tap somebody and say, he's talking to me right now. I'm not old yet, but when I get old, I won't be old. Come on, tell somebody that. 
I refuse to be old and I refuse to be crippled. I refuse to be senile. In the name of Jesus, I'll be everything God says I am. See, because whether you like it, the, the years will move on. The years will move on. The years will move on. And I promise you that one of the things you will struggle with as you get older is to maintain a healthy balance in your mind. You will have to keep talking to yourself on days when you don't feel like jumping out of bed like you used to. Oh, yeah, you better say amen. amen. When everybody is passing you by at the local mall because you're going a little slower, you're going to have to talk to yourself. Yeah. You're going to have to talk to yourself when you look in the mirror and see lines you didn't previously see. Yeah. And you're going to have to remind yourself of that covenant right, yeah. that the promise that God made to you was that he would give you long life and you would be strengthened with, blessed, with, with, with that blessed assurance on the inside that the one who keeps Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps, Amen. that he's watching over you Amen. even when you're not watching over yourself. Amen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you ought, to shake. you ought to shout glory to God right now. You ought to tell somebody next to you, he's talking about me. <laughs> Go to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Yeah, yeah, you know this. You know this. I said, you know this. I'm just here to remind you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Ah, oh, glory to God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. You're going to hear about blessing on Sunday. The prophetic blessing on your life. I'm going to teach you how to bless your wife. I'm going to teach you how to bless your husband. I'm going to teach you how to bless your sons and daughters. I'm going to teach you how to bless your enemies. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to teach you. Oh, yeah, watch this. I'm going to teach you that when your enemy curses you, you bless them. And when you bless them, the curse they put on you goes back on them. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Watch this, watch this. And forget not. There's that crazy word again. All his benefits. All his benefits. And then we get a list of a few of them who forgives all your iniquities. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I got some hang-ups in my life. He's already forgiven them. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All of it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. This is going to sound crazy. You're not a sinner anymore. That's right. Amen. Amen. You're a Christian who occasionally sins. Amen. I don't understand that one. You will. Just live a little longer. You'll get it. Yeah, you'll get it. Well, what's that mean? It means you make mistakes. That's right. Amen. But it means your new nature doesn't make them purposefully. Yeah. Well, what do you call that? Grace. You know those same people that always talk to you about grace, live law? They only want grace for them and grace for nobody else. Now I'm going back to the other side because you're not doing too good here. Double standard, spiritual psychotics, want grace when they sin, but not when you sin. Want to have a theory, theory of grace, but want to have a practice of law. Better read more. Who forgives all your iniquities. Here's the second benefit here. Who heals, there's that word, all again. Who heals all your what? Jesus. Who redeems your life from destruction in the name of Jesus. I prophesy the blessing of God over you that you will never have tragic things happen in your life. Amen. Who 
crowns you with loving kindness. Loving kindness there is the same Hebrew word for favor. Come on, put your hand up and do it like this, favor. Favor, favor. Favor, Sophie, when you went back for that examination and they told you what they originally thought they saw in those masses was nothing. That's because the favor of God is on you and the devil can, he can, he can blow on your house, but he can't blow it down. Amen. Somebody ought to say praise God. Praise God. And look at this, his tender mercies. He's, he's compassionate when other people are not. Compassionate. The same people who want to excommunicate you are the ones that Jesus goes looking for. And I declare to you, he is the good Samaritan that picks up the thief on the way. It's not you and me, it's Jesus. The priest couldn't do it. The scribe couldn't do it. The, uh, the, the rulers couldn't do it when they saw the man on the wayside. But the good Samaritan came along. And I know that we can put ourselves in there, but it's really not us. The good Samaritan is really Jesus. Because he picked you up when nobody wanted you. He found you when you were an outcast. He lifted you up when you were sinking deep in sin. He redeemed you and restored you when everybody called you, you were a cast out. And that's why you ought to praise him tonight. You ought to praise him tonight. You ought to praise him right now. 